In this edition of City News, learn about the virus that has impacted our daily lives. Also, take a look at a brand new and improved center here in the city. Plus, we'll show you why the youth gathered for a special celebration. These stories and much more coming up on City News. Hello and welcome to City News. I'm Jennifer Murillo. While many prepare for quarantine because of the coronavirus, it's important to get educated on the basics on how to help prevent it. The coronavirus disease, 2019, also known as COVID-19, is an infectious virus identified as the cause of an outbreak of respiratory illness. It's actually the, a strain of the normal cold virus, but uh, this particular strain is a little bit more dangerous than the usual cold virus in that a small percentage of people are going to get sicker than usual and some people can actually die from it. This outbreak that is said to have started in China has gone worldwide. Though the cause of how it originated is unknown and there is no medicine for it, there are preventative measures people can take to avoid getting COVID-19. It's going to be simple stuff like hand washing, um, not touching your face all the time, um, good hand hygiene, washing your hands, alcohol sanitizers, um, wiping down surfaces you touch frequently, and just being really aware of uh, how viruses are transmitted. While many are on high alert and deaths have steadily been going up, recovery rates have also been increasing. Those most at risk are older people and those with severe underlying conditions. Just stay calm. Um, you know, you don't have to go out and buy toilet paper and big stacks of water. Um, just really be good about isolating yourself, hand washing, maybe stay away from large gatherings. And just be aware that this is a virus infection, much like a common cold. Uh, very contagious, but very preventable with good hygiene. Dr. Joe Nakagawa also recommends you should quarantine yourself at home unless you are feeling severely ill. Since it's a virus infection, we don't have any antibiotics or there's no magical cure for it, and your body will fight it off on its own. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website is the best location for the most accurate and up-to-date information, as well as recommendations for those who may think they have the virus. For the latest updates on the coronavirus, go to the Center for Disease Control website at www.cdc.gov and the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health website at www.publichealth.lacounty.gov. As many places begin to shut down because of social distancing, here are a few of the places that are making other arrangements to continue with daily activity. The Hawthorne Senior Center is closed until further notice. Seniors enrolled in the meal program can pick up their five frozen meals for the week from the Inglewood Senior Center. You can get there by shuttle from the Hawthorne Senior Center or by driving directly. For the latest up-to-date information, call the Hawthorne Senior Center at 310-349-1650. The Sentinella Valley Union High School District has also gone dark and turned to distance learning. During this time, the district will be providing free breakfast and lunch to all students from 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. pickup only. The Hawthorne School District schools and facilities will be closed through the end of spring break. Food will be served from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Eucalyptus, Cornbloom, Hawthorne Middle School, and Prairie Vista. For the latest updates, call the Senior Center and the schools directly. With the current global crisis, low-income families will need food assistance now more than ever. St. Margaret's Center's food pantry can use your help. Volunteers are needed to distribute food to low-income households. The food pantry is open Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. For more information, contact Jessica Villalobos at yvillalobos at ccharities.org or call 310-672-2208. As the situation develops with COVID-19, they will be taking the necessary precautions. Open hours might change depending on the day-to-day -day situation changes due to the coronavirus. A project that was launched in 2016 when the Richstone Family Center received a $1 million grant has been completed. We were at the ribbon cutting ceremony to bring you the details. The new Every Child Healing Center created 14 new therapy offices, a dedicated art therapy room, and a large multi-purpose community space. 
we are able to probably see at one given, any given of, um, hour, probably about mm, somewhere between 10 to 15 clients and run potentially two groups. Adding this facility allows the Richstone Family Center to continue to expand their services for individuals, families, children, and our group counseling. It's just such an uplifting, happy place. There's sunlight everywhere, there's high ceilings. It gives a very optimistic feel. Many generous donors helped get this project completed, including the Every Child Foundation that granted Richstone $1 million for programming and the capital that built this project. A lot of us have children of our own and we want the best for all children. We want the same thing that our own children have, which is kindness, good health, good education, safe environments, and, and the promise of a, optim of a great future. And we're just happy to give back. We're going to be able to help a lot more people. And because of the donations that we received and, and all the help that we get from the community is why we are able to have this organization. Plus, the improvements to the entire center also provides more space to continue to provide further after-school program parenting classes, and fitness and wellness classes. We look at wellness a little bit broader uh, other than just the normal like workout classes. We incorporate music, we incorporate acting because healing from trauma has many, it, it's a process and it, it happens on many different levels. The outside of the facility also got a new addition with a new basketball court donated by Connecta Federal Credit Union. Richstone is, is committed you know, to, to helping folks uh, recover uh, body, mind and spirit and so they can get their bodies out on the court and uh, get some of that energy out and then do their homework and um, you know, it's just a great environment for them. Sometimes just taking the kids out and playing a little bit and kind of incorporating the therapeutic process into the play um, helps them to kind of start the conversation. Richstone will soon be completing their garden for kids to learn how food grows and giving them another place to feel at home. To learn about Richstone or other programs they offer, visit their website at www.richstonefamily.org. At the Hawthorne Memorial Center, high school students get a glimpse into their future. Tony Long Jr. shows us how. The Centinella Valley Union High School District and South Bay Workforce Investment Board set up a chance for students to have a head start on their lives after high school. Today we're having our third annual career fair where students from Centinella Valley get to come, meet with vendors, receive a few trainings, and see what they need to do to start their pathway to getting a good job and a successful career in our community and in our state. This is great. What this does is it allows young people to see all the jobs within each of these organizations. There's a wide range of career options for students to view. We have a big summer program going on uh, July 13th through the 17th at uh, Hawthorne Airport and the intent of the camp is to just expose different students between the ages of 14 to 18 to the aviation career fields. A lot of people don't realize that we actually offer full ride scholarships uh, along with over 150 job opportunities from mechanics to the medical field to technology to computers, legal law. The fair also offers students lessons on adult life situations, such as handling their finances. A lot of time they don't know about budgeting and they don't have an idea or a clue. So Connecta is here to teach them how to create a budgeting um, tool and help them um, save money. Senior students appreciate the opportunity, making the most of their experience. So far it's great, you know, it's uh, good to be able to experience all the opportunities they're providing for us, you know, just giving us a good chance to see what we want to do. I got to talk to the health insurance company, to a lot of different businesses, and I was really excited because I was like, wow, maybe one day I might want to go into one of these fields and they're going to be able to teach me on how to do it. It's good to to make connections with people because you never know who you can run into and they can like opportunity can change your life. According to District Superintendent Dr. Gregory O'Brien, it's expected that over 400 students are getting the opportunity to look into their future. For HCTV, I'm Tony Long Jr. For more information on events and programs with the Centinella Valley Union High School District, visit their website at www.centinella.k12.ca.us. Coming up next on City News, Learn how dozens of local kids get an experience that's out of this world. 
also see what school has students showing up in pajamas and why. There's more news ahead. We'll be right back. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Welcome back. In less than a year since the Job Preparation Academy graduation at the South Bay One Stop Business and Career Centers, Inglewood, one graduate is off to a great start. We caught up with him to bring you his story. Tyrone Wilmington had been incarcerated for 11 years. When he was released, he was looking for new opportunities and knew he wanted to do something positive with his life. I was on my way to work in at, for Buffalo Wild Wings and um, I was looking for work coming home from prison. My path wasn't really determined or wasn't set in stone and I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do, but I knew I, wanted, I had to do something. In June 2019, Wilmington graduated from the Job Preparation Academy, where they helped give him the tools and tips necessary that he at first didn't think he needed for the workforce. Since Wilmington started his own drone company and most recently also became a truck driver. It meshes perfect with my, my company so it doesn't interfere. So it's, it's basically just a blessing to have uh, multiple streams of income. In part due to this program and his family support, his life is on the right track. Although Wilmington says he doesn't see himself as a success quite yet. If I could go back 11, 12 years ago and talk to myself, I would probably just tell myself just to stay confident, give your energy to good things because good things happen for you when you seek good. Today, he knows that if he keeps evolving and pushing the right buttons, opportunities will present themselves. For more information on the South Bay One Stop Business and Career Center, visit their website at www.southbayonestop.org. There's so much about the universe scientists are still exploring, but while the hunt continues, a few local students got the chance to do a little exploring themselves. Lauren McKay tells us how their experience was out of this world. Imagine. taking flight in this. When you're a member of the air crew, you're not really, you don't have the quiet time to think about what's going on. You're thinking about what your next task is. And for NASA astronaut Mark Van Eyes, his task was exploring the outer world. So I think a fundamental part of being human is curiosity and exploration is all about curiosity. Curiosity, local kids from several schools in the area got to fulfill asking him one question at a time. I have put tons of effort into making this moment work, and so when it finally happens, you want to cheer. He lived in the space shell. He was exercising. He was eating food. He was staying healthy. Three, two, one. They did some exploring of their own. Putting their skills to the test, and yes, it's a bit like rocket science making things like these mini rocket ships, taking flight. It goes like all the way up. Or seeing just how creative they can get protecting this little egg from gravity's pull. An event at El Camino College that's been plugging into young creative minds for more than 30 years. The whole idea is to encourage the future of innovation and possibilities. So it's educational, but it's also very inspiring for these students to really see and, and experience what that's all about. On this earth and beyond. For HCTV, I'm Lauren McKay. For more information on events at El Camino College, go to their website at www.elcamino.edu. A local school participates in a national initiative engaging children in reading more books. Tony Long Jr. has the details. Families spend time together at Corn Bloom Elementary School, celebrating reading across America. It's a family picnic, 
and the purpose is for the families to be able to enjoy their children and enjoy Dr. Seuss and read a book with them. Some students, staff, and parents arrive on campus dressed in their pajamas with the theme stemming from the Dr. Seuss story, Sleep Book. We want people to maybe associate when they put their pajamas on that it's time to read, and we want the families to see that they do have a great time with their children reading and really get to see the opportunity that they have for conversation and for making connections with their children. Second grader Bailey is confident in her reading. I feel a lot better that I'm reading by myself now because in first grade I couldn't really read. First grader Kia cherishes her time with her grandparents. It was really fun. I mean, I really miss them so much. I really love them. Parents and grandparents love being invested in their child's education. I shared the book with a group of uh, first and kindergartners, and they were very involved and interested. We was going through the story together. It's very important that you allow your child to see that you're as much involved in their education as they are. I don't care who you are. Any form of fashion, it's a great thing. School principal Marissa Stewart says that the school celebrates reading across America the whole week in honor of Dr. Seuss's birthday. For HCTV, I'm Tony Long Jr. For more information on events and programs happening at Cornbloom Elementary School, visit the website listed on the screen. Four teachers at Hawthorne High School sat in the hot seat for the student body. The Knights and Iconians, also known as the Interact Club, held their annual Pies for Polio fundraiser. I actually really take a lot of pride in being able to say that I was part of something like this because not everyone my age can take initiative and put thought into something as important as this. During lunchtime, students were able to purchase cream pies from club members for only one dollar in pie one or all four teachers. We went through almost 10 bottles of whipped cream, so I want to say a little over 30 but that's definitely a lot more than I was anticipating. Since 1988, Rotary International, its partners and clubs such as these have worked at raising money for the end polio campaign. The money raised will be used to buy the vaccine that helps end polio, a viral infection that causes nerve injury, which leads to partial and full paralysis. It is something that, um, you know, we luckily don't have to face. It's not a, a threat to us anymore. We just, it's great for people to donate because there are very few people still have it, unfortunately. While the number of cases have drastically dropped since 1988, Interact Club members say they feel they are making a difference, helping those countries that are still affected. For HCTV, I'm Jennifer Murillo. To find out about other events held by the Interact Club, go to their website at hawthorneinteractclub.webs.com forward slash. That does it for this edition of City News. Thanks for watching. If you have any story ideas, please call us at 310-349-1630 or email us at hctv at hawthornca.gov. Don't forget you can watch City News online on YouTube by searching Hawthorne Community Television. We'll leave you now with footage from the Space Science Day. See you next time.